Hello, beautiful lights, and welcome to another episode of From a Medium's Perspective. We're going to be taking a deeper look at the layers of the aura. The aura is our subtle body, and that's opposed to our physical body. It's the part that's sort of less noticeable because we're used to seeing things in the material dimension, but it can be seen. It's the luminous energy cloud that surrounds all matter, living and inanimate. It can be seen as various colored outlines around the head of a person, like a halo, or around their whole body, like a capsule. There are people that can naturally see these auras as vivid colors around everything. People, animals, trees, plants. If you can't, you can develop this skill. An informal word for the word aura is vibe. If you've ever heard about they have a vibe about them or there's a certain aura about them. It indicates the impact of that individual. And it can mean something good or bad. You can even have an aura of respectability or an aura of friendliness about it. And all people are psychic. All people are perceptive. And it's my belief that you can develop that gift all the way up into mediumship if you choose. The aura's colors and symbols and sensations signify a person's state of mind. It shows you their health, connection with the source of all things. And it can even tell future events that are emerging in that person's life. We do have free will at the level of the soul. So when I talk about things that are coming up in someone's life, they're strong in their energy field. It doesn't necessarily mean that they can't be changed. We can focus our will, our thought, and emotion. And when we do that, energy follows focus. And since we're made of energy, our lives start shifting a vibrational path. And we can literally change our world with our thoughts. The way that we perceive things and the choices we make makes a huge difference in how our world feels to us. So I'm not saying that everything is predetermined. However, some things have been written into our life contract. Our life contract is that agreement that we made before we came in this world where we said, yeah, I think I'll stay there for X amount of time and work on my life purpose for that particular endeavor. There are certain people, too, that we have soul contracts with or soul agreements with that we say, okay, I'm going down. I'll meet you up at age 20. You'll be age 40. We'll meet up and you'll help me with something and I'll help you with something. So those are like soul agreements that we make. But a lot of things are left for us to choose. Our free will that we have, our right to choose, is what actually creates our own happiness or unhappiness. This ability to choose what we create for ourselves is both our right and our responsibility. So what does our will and free choice have to do with auras? Well, auras are essentially our psychic energy field. They're the energy that we emit, it's descriptive of us, and it's expressive of our being. They're generally oval-shaped, and they're a series of colored bands. The bands are filled with sound, light, and vibration. I tend to see them also at a larger scale, and they look like a torus that energy donut that you see on scientific things. It has sort of a flow of energy that passes through us at the center from the top and the bottom, and it connects us to the matrix of all that is. One way to get an instant insight into someone's personality or what's going on in their life is to become aware of their aura because there's specific information contained there that describes our true nature and it gets you past any facade or superficial behavior. It doesn't really matter what the person's saying, whether they're trying to block your energy or whether they think that they can't be seen, their aura will give them away. And once that truth is seen as a medium, I can start talking soul to soul to that individual. So it's one way that I sometimes begin a reading, although not always. The aura is a reflection of our true nature at any given moment, and it contains an incredibly vast amount of information about someone. 
It can reveal information about your thoughts, feelings, dreams, your past, the present, the future, things you're afraid of, aspirations that you're striving for, and things that are coming into and leaving your auric field. They're filled with forms that I consider thought forms. They're like shapes of things that describe basic feelings, emotions, and ideas that you carry. And even can have the aura can also be influenced by the thoughts, emotions, and wishes of other people. I actually think of the aura as a field of information, kind of like a CAT scan. And you can train yourself to see its layers, its colors, and there are all kinds of things that are interesting to look at that are phenomenon in the aura, like past lives, you can find guides and totems, people that are in spirit around the individual, mythical beings, elementals, angels, ascended masters, gods and goddesses. There are just a lot of things that can be seen if you tune in. There are various interpretations to the symbols and colors that are found in the aura, but essentially you can develop and rely on your own intuitive interpretation of what that means to you because your guides are going to develop a particular method of understanding what it is that you see that's personal to you. You can use a formalized process of understanding the colors there and they're a good place to start, but do rely on your guides and your intuition a little bit more than general say so. These things in the aura are always changing shape and color, and it depends on the various vibrations in and around the energies of that person. In general, the more colorful and cleaner and brighter the aura, the better and more spiritually, better connected. I won't say better because that doesn't necessarily mean they're any better than anybody else because we're all just people. They might be more spiritually advanced, more connected to higher vibrational concepts and energies. And the more universal and uniform the energy is distributed in the aura, the healthier and more balanced that person is. The aura itself has layers. There are seven distinct layers in the aura of a human being. Each layer signifies a certain aspect. The seven major chakras, the chakras are the colorful energy centers that run up your spine and over your head. They originate in the physical body, but they also exist and connect with the different layers of the aura. Depending on the speed and vibrational level of the energy, it increases with each level. So beginning from the bottom up, the vibration increases on our chakra planes. From the inside to the out is the vibrational increase in our resonance as you go through the layers of the aura, the seven layers that make up the aura. We have a physical body. It's the most tangible manifestation of our consciousness. And its function is to be right here, right now, to be conscious of what we're doing. When we're walking, we're walking. When we're eating, we're eating. It's the part that we recognize most easily. But the subtle bodies, which our aura describes, each one corresponds to a chakra. It has its own qualities and characteristics, and they blend together to form the total aura. So I'm going to go through the seven layers with you. The first one, which is closest to the body, is called the etheric layer, the etheric body. And it's connected to the root chakra, the bottom chakra. It's the first layer of the aura. It's closest to our body. It's easiest to notice. It's about one quarter to two inches thick. It's just contingent to the body itself. That layer can appear as a bluish gray haze. And sometimes you can see sparks of blue or gray light moving around the energy lines. The gray can represent a more robust athletic type of person, someone who's physically active the blue might be someone who's more sedentary. This is where we can see our energy reflected when it flows through the meridians and chakras. The meridians are the energy pathways that flow through and around our body. The etheric body has also been called our etheric double, is described in Eastern medicine as the meridians. 
So that's that layer that I was talking about that transmits chi. And chi is our energy. By seeing this layer, it can point out potential diseases that are developing in the physical body and give you a heads up. Maybe you can change your diet or exercise or improve your meditation or change your thoughts. Sometimes that will have a profound effect on our physical body. Our dream state also occurs in the etheric body, that first layer, and it forms a connection between your physical and the higher bodies, sort of that first interface. And it's the part of us that senses the emotions and feelings of others. So it's the empathic layer. That's where empathy is experienced, where we connect to the emotions and feelings of other people. The second layer is called the emotional layer, so or emotional body. This layer corresponds to the second chakra near the navel, and it resides about two, one to two inches away from the body. The emotional body is egg-shaped, and it contains the other two layers. The emotional layer is associated with the person's feelings. The layer is fluid and gaseous in nature, sort of like a cloud, and extends one to three inches beyond the body. The color can be quite bright or, in contrast, very muddy, and it can reflect all the colors of the rainbow because of all the extremes of our emotion. That's where the chakra colors are most easily seen in the emotional body. That body reflects all of our emotions and feelings, happiness, hope, love, anger, sorrow, hate, all of them are found there. It's also, interestingly enough, connected to our past, which can cause problems for us if we are not clearing out our emotions about the past, because our body can become saturated with our wishes or desires about the past. And when those unmet desires become suppressed or stored in the emotional body, they can cause emotional blockages and disturbances, which leads to physical and mental conditions. As the name implies, this is where your emotions come into play. How you feel or perceive your feelings will show up on that layer. Any blockages that you have or negative emotions will also be found there and sometimes are seen as holes in that layer or dark spot. The emotional layer is constantly in flux because it depends on present emotions and registers the strong emotions of the past. As I mentioned, fear, pain, hate, love, all of those things that we carry from the past, even until our past lives. So we are really multidimensional beings. The third layer is the mental layer, and it's a little more structured it relates to our solar plexus chakra and depends on the vibrations of your thoughts and mental processes. It extends about three to eight inches away from the body and is usually first seen as a bright yellow light radiating around the head, neck, and shoulders of a person, but can extend around the entire body, just depending on how intense your mental efforts are or your focus. And it can be light to more pronounced the light can appear stronger and can pulsate when the person is concentrating on mental tasks. And depending on the thought, their colored sparks kind of emanate. We shape our reality with our mind. And our mind is the constructor or the builder. And it reflects our ability through which we develop our learning and our personality. So our mental health or illness can be reflected in that level. This layer is also influenced by your ego and willpower. And if you have any self-doubts or limiting beliefs, that's where they're going to show up in the mental layer. Also, if you're feeling confused or lack of clarity, or if you have crystal clarity, those will show up as well. The fourth layer is the astral body or the astral layer, and it relates to the heart chakra. It's located about 10 to 12 inches out from the physical body, and it's a colorful gaseous layer. It's where the astral cords are formed, A-S-T-R-A-L, astral cords. One name for it is the love layer because it's infused with this rosy pink color, 
And when you're thinking about your relationships, whether they're love relationships, platonic or intimate, this is the layer that those are formed on. Our human relationships bonds with nature and animals as well. All the chakras are visible within that layer, but each of them is infused with kind of a pink shade. So someone starting to read the auric field might just see pink. As they get more expert at differentiating, they'll see the colors that underlay that shade. This is also the astro travel layer because it bridges the physical world and the spiritual realm. So that's the astral body or the astral layer. The next level, the fifth one, is an etheric template, and it corresponds to the throat chakra, and that's where our authentic voice emanates from. It's found about 18 inches from the physical body, and it's even more structured than the last, and it extends as far as one and a half to two feet out from the body. I call it the manifestation layer. It's our divine will. That's where you begin the process of creation, where thoughts become things, the etheric template. It's the blueprint for everything that you create on the physical plane, including your identity and your personality. The etheric body can be identified with our memory and thought processes, and all our memories, whether forgotten or remembered or pushed away, are mirrored in the etheric body. So you can understand how that would affect manifestation if you're not aware of thought processes or memories that have affected a clear expression of yourself or what it is you want. It would be important to get that cleared out so that you can be an effective manifester or manifestress. So all physical forms are held on the etheric template level because it is that bridge. The next layer, the celestial layer, it has also been called hologrammatic layer, like a hologram. It corresponds to our third eye, that one between our two eyes on our forehead, or where we make mental projections, our sixth chakra. And it's about two feet away from the physical body. It's harder to see for most people because its colors are kind of shimmery and pastel in color. Some people have described the layer as mother of pearl. It's also our psychic layer because it's a mirror of the subconscious mind. And by listening to your subconscious, your journey through life becomes much more simple and rewarding. So it's a good thing to enhance that gift in yourself. This is the level that we express our connection to source. It's considered the layer of unconditional love. We talked about love in the past layer. This is unconditional love where we're able to understand and express our feelings and relationships to others at the higher level of care and compassion. Our consciousness expresses itself like a universal love for all life at a cosmic or soul level in this layer. The catheric template is sometimes known as the causal body, C-A-U-S-A-L, causal body, or the I am layer. And it's the last layer. It's associated with the crown chakra and our ultimate connection with all that is. The catheric template extends about two and a half to three feet beyond the physical body. And the energies of that body spin with a very high frequency where the soul communicates with the conscious mind via the subconscious mind. So your conscious mind can hear the subconscious thoughts. That's the conduit through which that translates. And consciousness is expressed in any concept of higher knowing or belief systems. It's where the initial creative impulse starts and is integrated knowing, like from the higher perspective. It is the celestial layer, which is the sixth layer, is higher consciousness. The cathartic layer or causal body is unity conscience. That's the point where you and the universe become one. It's the layer where you become one with God. This layer is the strongest and most resilient layer of the aura, and it's where you invoke protections to build and strengthen that outer layer, as we've talked about in our psychic protection episode. 
the layer is composed of these rapidly pulsating golden cords, and it's just beautiful. We're actually really much more than our physical bodies, and the layers of our auras correspond to the seven chakras. We interface with the earth, each other, whether living or past, and beyond into the cosmic dimension on all of these layers, and each one has its specific purpose. In quick review, the root chakra is the root of the etheric layer, and it's our dreams and empathic perception and can be blue or gray. The emotional layer, which relates to our sacral chakra, deals with past lives and our past and looks like a rainbow. The solar plexus chakra is the root of the mental layer of our aura. It's our gut knowing, our intuition, and it's yellow. Our astral layer is our bridge to the astral realms. It's astro travel, relationships, and love, and it's pink and rainbow colored. Our throat chakra is the root of the etheric or etheric template, and that's our authentic voice or personal truth, and that was the one that's the manifestation level, the etheric layer, and its color varies. The celestial layer tends to be pastel and shimmer, and it's our psychic and unconditional love layer. And our causal, which is our link to the divine and oneness with the universe. I wonder if it connects us to the Akashic Records, uh, which we'll talk about another time. That is our crown chakra, and it is often gold. So we have a lot of layers to our identity. And then beyond us is the cosmic plane. It's comprised of an unknown number of layers. Some say there are at least two and that they're crystalline and shimmery. If the cosmic plane is heaven or on the other side, the Bible refers to seven levels of heaven, and the Kabbalah describes 12 layers within each of those. So the function of these cosmic layers is yet to be explored and agreed upon. I guess we're all trying to explore it to some way. I often get asked, what's the difference between a psychic and a medium? In brief, I just wanted to say that a psychic is someone who has the biblical gift of the word of wisdom, and a medium is someone who has the gift of the discerning of spirits. Those gifts are definitely not limited to Christianity or to the Bible by any means, but it's a reference for some of our listeners. And they follow kind of a continuum. We're all born with an instinct to survive find food, shelter, clothing, sex, you know, all the things that we need to have a basic, happy survival life. The next level on an intuitive spectrum that happens is just intuition. That's when we just know. We just know that so-and-so passed, or we just know what's right or wrong. Then psychic ability is when you don't know how you know. You just sound extremely smart, and you are saying things that are flowing from you. You're not quite sure where they came from, but it just sound very wise. That's psychic ability. And it can deal with the things that deal with the person themselves, the individual that you're talking to. Mediumship deals with the people that are around the person that you're talking to and answers those questions of psychic development. How did I know? Well, that was your grandmother and she's standing over there. She's got little gray curly hair and kind of a short lady, and I don't think she liked to cook. You know, that kind of thing that are the proofs that life continues and that we have a source to the information that we have. But I promised you a tale from the other side. So I wanted to tell you actually a story about past lives. And I didn't really believe in past lives. Somebody had asked me, do you think we have past lives? My answer probably would have been, well, if we have them, then I want this one to be the last one because that's enough. I was seeing someone and I had the most extraordinary experience with him as we were just cuddling each other and uh, laying there. All of a sudden, boom, I was transported into like a medieval forest. We were in the same position beside a little stream in the forest halfway in our skivvies, 
or whatever they call them in medieval times. <laughs> and I could feel the ground shake. There were hoofbeats coming, horses approaching. And as I looked up, I saw my brother on the back of a black horse, and he had two or three of his friends with him. They had come after me to protect my virtue, perhaps. My brother jumps off the horse and demands that I go with him. His friends jump off the horse to deal with my lover. As I ride away, I know that I would never see him again. And then I kind of return to where I was with the person that I was with, and I knew that he had been the same person. Another time with that same person, I had an experience of going back into like Neanderthal times. I was in a cave and there were all these skins and furs on top of a rock. I'd like to say altar, but it wasn't an altar because it was just designed for keeping you off the floor. I guess it's like a big flat rock that we slept on and remembered his resonance in that time frame. And that's what kind of opened me up to past lives in general. So I don't know what you think about past lives. That's what we're going to be talking about in our next segment. It's an interesting thing to think about. I recently have begun offering past life readings. I had someone come just this last week exclusively for past life. Past lives do occasionally come up in a regular reading it's not my usual thing to connect to because there's no way for me to prove it to someone in a normal or effective way as you would with evidential mediumship. You know, if somebody's grandmother or grandfather comes through or child or whoever, you can describe their personality and the way they look or how they passed and develop enough proofs that your listener or sitter understands that you're just not making it up. But with a past life thing, or animal communication, which I also do, you have to really connect those things to the current life for them to make sense to that person. And this girl that came to me, we tapped into seven of her past lives, and each one had a significance to her life in the present. There were resonances. We talked in the last section about the astral body and how resonances from the past can get stuck in our emotional layer, mental layer. And she was able to understand some fears that she had about that. So next time we're going to be talking about past lives. And I hope you'll be able to join us. The next thing that I wanted to do is a meditation. And you might ask, well, why a meditation? You know, I really want to get my psychic knuckles cracking and do something interesting with developing my abilities. But that's just it. A meditation does develop your abilities. And I don't necessarily mean that it has to be meditation that is static. We often think of a sort of a Zen meditation, perhaps, or a type of meditation where your objective is to completely clear your mind. And there is benefit in clearing your mind, but meditation does not need to be static by any means. And those that are developing can have quite the adventure during their meditation. But the first point of that is to master the quiet mind so that you can receive information clearly. I ran across a quote from Sean Acor, A-C-H-O-R, and he said, Take two minutes each day to stop what you're doing and watch your breath go in and out. And this exercise trains your brain to do one thing at a time. Research suggests that a multitasking brain has a harder time falling asleep, is more stressed, and has lower energy. So by taking time to relax your brain, it has a chance to undo the negative effects of trying to manage everything at once. And I thought that was a wonderful quote about the benefits of a particular meditation. What I would like to do is uh, lead you through a lovely chakra affirmation. And again, why chakras? We're talking about auras, and that's because the chakras and the auras are linked. The chakras, again, are the colors that run up our spinal column and go over our head. They follow the colors Roy G. Biv, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet as they go up our bodies. And I think of us as sort of crystallized sparks of divine light. 
that when we come into this dimension, the divine light shines through us and breaks into our chakras, gives us a color, gives us our spectrum, like a prism of color. I took this particular meditation or affirmation from a website called healingjourneysenergy.com, and I modified it slightly, but you can find it in its entirety there. And so if you'll please, if you will, join me for this brief meditation. We're going to start at the root chakra at the bottom of the spine and move up the energy centers to our crown chakra, which is the one that shines over our head. As I focus on this red light that radiates from my base chakra, I know that I am of good health and sound mind. I stand in my strength and in my truth. I forgive myself for neglecting my body in the past. I now love every part of my body. Every cell is filled with energy and power. I no longer judge my beautiful self, and I accept my greatness with all that I am. I now choose to have thoughts that add to my life, thoughts of love, compassion, harmony, and peace. I sleep in peace. I awaken in bliss, and I enjoy living. And as I focus on this orange chakra that radiates from my sacral center, I feel radiant, alive, and strong. I am able to feel all the positive emotions. I embrace them as they allow me to stand in power. I am able to feel all the negative emotions, feelings of fear, anxiousness, doubt, and I truly understand what causes them. I accept them as bringing about feelings of joy and dignity and peace as they teach lessons of growth. I am at peace and I lovingly release any negatives or negative feelings that are causing me any discomfort or pain. As I focus on this yellow light that radiates from my solar plexus, I am able to see all the people in my life, those from the past, the present, my family, friends, and even foes. I see them in a circle of light, a loving, healing light. They are truly blessed in this circle. They are of good health and of sound mind, and they are at peace. I now choose to take back my power from all these people, and I lovingly release all feelings of any pain that they may have caused me. The more I release, the more I love. The more I love, the more I am loved. As I focus on this intense green light that radiates from my heart, I notice the green or pink gem that lies within, and I am reminded of the unconditional love that I am. I know that I am worth loving. I am who I am, and I am proud of who I am. In this space of love, I release from my life, anyone and anything that does not bring me joy. I choose to be surrounded by positive, loving, and successful people. I love myself more with each breath that I take, and I love unconditionally. As I focus on the radiant blue light that radiates from my throat, I realize the power of my voice, the power of my words emanate, and I choose always to speak my truth. In doing so, I allow prosperity to enter my life, my finances, my spiritual growth, my physical and emotional body are all taken care of by the divine energies that embrace my life. 
as I focus on the indigo blue color that radiates from my third eye, all negative thoughts that invade my mind are erased. I am able to stand in my power on my very own strength and support myself. I am in a safe place which allows me to grow and to embrace my beautiful life. My future is remarkable. As I focus on the violet light that radiates from my crown, I feel the strong spiritual connection to my higher self. The divine light is my protection. The divine energy is my power. I am complete. And now slowly bring your awareness back to the space that you are in, to the feeling of peace and wholeness, and know that you are safe and all is well. I am a minister, which some people find to be at odds with being a medium, but it seems to work for me quite well. I believe Jesus was a medium. I'm not much on one particular religion over another. And one of the prayers that is often used in metaphysical circles for protection or for other things is the Lord's Prayer. And it's funny because that prayer actually was given as an example of a prayer, but there was also the admonition not to pray in public and not to use that particular prayer over and over word by word, but as a template for a prayer or for connection to the divine. I ran across a prayer the other day that was a rewrite of the Lord's Prayer, and it's from the New Zealand Prayer Book. I will do my best to pronounce the name of the book with respect. He Karakia Minare O Audarau. And it goes like this. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and shall be, Mother and Father God of us all, Loving Energy in whom is Heaven. The hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and become our earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip that is any type of evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. That's this week's show. We've enjoyed it and hope that you have as well. In our next episode, we will be talking about past lives, and I'll be telling a past life memory as a ghost, as my tale from the other side. And there'll be some other interesting things to help you build your psychic abilities. We appreciate you joining us. If you would like to schedule a private reading with me or begin one-on-one -on -one private psychic tutoring, you can visit my website at mediumtracylockwood.com. That's Tracy with an E-Y at the end. Or you can friend me at Psychic Medium. Tracy Lockwood on Facebook. That's Psychic Medium Tracy Lockwood. You can also reach me by phone in the U.S. by texting me on my cell at 540-998-9789. We'll see you next week for a view of life from a medium's perspective. And remember, it is never inappropriate to be kind and without integrity. You have nothing.